Today I'm going to go over my current Euro Tactics build and transform it from this to this. For this particular video, I'm going to go over the upgraded parts that I got for this build, what I'm going to switch out, and specify the reasons for this ultimate Speaky B build. So stay tuned. And oh, Fernie? Oh, he's going to be flying out! That's a very strange jump I've seen from Afrani. The sheer drift. Oh my god, bro, bro, what? Yeah, I don't know how to fucking say it. Now that I've been playing Speaky B for a little over a year now, it's come to my attention that a lot of Euro builds shouldn't just be aesthetically pleasing, but overall practical on the field as well. I've had bad luck here and there playing some competitions, tournaments or whatever, especially the reason for my current transition to a lot of rifles. And even with a great build such as the SSG-1, it won't always be reliable on the field, so I gotta kind of revert back and forth between that and HPA. Um, I could just DSG my current SSG-1 build, and I don't wanna shell out the money right now, especially now that I I've bought a new Lux. Uh, this is definitely going to help me out on a different kind of field with a different kind of place. Very happy to see what this has got in store for me. So I'll definitely make some content soon about this. I do have some parts here that I'm going to transition to. I got this new mag release from Max Hop just to kind of match the upper receiver that I have here. This is the complete SSG-1 upper receiver that has the flush inner barrel. I did switch out the hop up here because I did want to use the internal tracer from Max Hop. I am using a cable that runs along inside the gearbox and out through this grip right here which I did get from Amped Airsoft specifically for the Max Hop Tracer. So I heard some good reviews here and there about the Max Hop Tracer. Overall it's testing this in the latest speed night that I went to. It's been pretty good to me. This definitely does light up just as well as a brighter C so no issues yet. I do have a backup just in case it is an easy install. These triggers are nice but they have a very long pull every time you put uh, push down on a trigger so I did end up getting a speed trigger for Amp Airsoft it was recommended to me from a lot of people on the field. This is my first time having one, so I'm actually excited to fine tune it and shoot it the way I want to. You guys have seen my other videos where I did talk about my other two Euro builds. One was the Vendetta, the other was the Euro Tactics ESG. I took both of those apart and I'm gonna mix and match, intertwine, just because my latest ESG build, it was working fine. I like it, but it was a little too top heavy. I just kind of want to experiment just a little bit further, but it, they are prone to breaking at the beaver tail. And that is something I did notice over this past week that there's a crack on this side and on the other side as well. So something that, you know, if you guys do have this grip, uh, something to watch out for. And honestly, it is a little bit too bulky for me. It Durability is what they're going for. It's not a really nice feel when you're playing on the field. Honestly, a lot of these grips are made for people who play home or are back players, not for front players. So, you know, from, speaking from experience, you guys have already seen me go through at least a few of these. Going back Look, man, here's my answer, bro. Hold on, this is for everybody on YouTube. Can we stop fucking 3D printing shit? For those of you that are new into Airsoft and trying to get into it, I know that was probably a mouthful, but you know what? Maybe this will work for you better visually. So let's get to it. I currently have the APS gearbox that I was using for the F2. You can see that it is a little bit of a tight fit just because of the way the gearbox was made. I do have the Jack gearbox. That is the GNG V2 gearbox that I got from my SSG-1. Everything is all bundled together. It's not really ideal. I am using a longer FCU cable, uh, as well as the cable that is going to be used for the internal tracer for Max Hop Up. Um, Ideally, I am going to use a shorter FCU cable, a better trigger and everything. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and mix and match some of the parts between both gearboxes and engines, uh, put it all together, put it in a body, and then I'll show you guys how everything looks right after. One week later. Oh. As of taping this, uh, I did have to take a quick break just because I had some COVID and whatnot, but um, better now. Now that everything is put together, I did have to replace the Gorilla FCU, which I did put with the stock Polestar F2 FCU, did make some minor adjustments to it, but it all works the same. The Gorilla FCU kind of lost uh, functionality with the Bluetooth function, so I had to just disregard that for now. I'll probably get it fixed at some point or replace it, who knows. I, I had to replace this with another previous cut because I thought I had a new one, but when you get a line, you honestly want to cut it to about maybe a little bit more than halfway than you're supposed to just to give yourself a little bit of wiggle room for the fcu and the lipo and this euro tactics grip here you can see that it kind of runs along 
at least a little bit toward the logo there. You could even probably do it just a little bit more even toward the gauge here. That way you can fold the line in a little bit more. You can see that I have the other cable that is connected to the FCU. This is for the max hop up tracer. This is just how it's going to look like for the time being just because it will definitely all fit into the upper receiver. It might be a little wonky, but it's something that you won't see internally. The max trigger release itself, I did have to shave off a few parts from this G&G SSG-1 body, uh, which was prohibiting me from actually getting a good grip on the mags that I was putting into this body here. So overall, I had to do some modifications, but it did work out in the end. It wasn't anything too crazy. Because this is the Eurotaxis Gen 2 grip, I did have to make some modifications, which wasn't really too crazy. It does come with these little spacers on the left side, these two 3D printed spacers, but because this is the Gen 2 and not the Gen 3, it doesn't come with the screw grip that keeps the regulator in place, so I had to kind of MacGyver it put some foldable green tape, painter's tape or whatever, um, that way I can keep it out. The only reason why I put it on the top is so that way I can avoid um, getting it through this portion here, which is for the regulator itself and controls the PSI so that doesn't get in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and install this tube and then just go from there. The FCU programming itself, um, just from what I learned at the last Speaky B tournament in LA, you can do a semi-lock with a low rate of fire and maybe just one or two round bursts to get it to a very quick trigger finger. A lot of people have been doing that instead of just running binary or even ramping, so it kind of comes off as one of the modifications of shooting semi only fairly quickly. You see right here that I kind of put the line in already. It is nice and snug um, as well as the mag that I have into this it is very, very snug. Way better than the APS body that I had. That was a skeleton body you guys saw earlier. No issues with this max mag release button. It is smooth as butter. I have no problem. I'm liking this trigger, this max release trigger a lot. It's a cool modification um, that you can do or add on or whatever. Um, and plus it's colored. So I think I'm going to do that with my SSG-1 build in the back there and just kind of go from there. All right, now with that installed, I'm going to grab my peanut tank here, which is a 50 4500. So I'm going to see if there are any leaking issues in this. And it sounds pretty good to me. You can see it has got a tight fit, somewhat wobbly, but not too much. Obviously the folded painter's tape is helping there, but this is actually a little bit, this is what I'm looking for. Nothing, nothing too wobbly. At, at the last time I was using this, everything was just moving around. The little spaces on the side, the 3D printed parts were coming out. That's not what I was trying to have on the field. Obviously missing parts are no-no. So gotta do everything you can just to kind of keep everything in um, the leak is non-existent, so I'm just gonna go ahead and test fire. Quick little update on this build. I did have to switch engines from the Polestar F2 to the Jack. Uh, it's running pretty smooth, some minor issues. Everything's running great. I did put some decals onto the rail, but nothing too crazy. The upper receiver already is connected with the Max Hopper from Umbrella Armory, which is our hops. Here I did connect it to the FCU wire, which does light it up entirely. The mag bed's down here, and everything else is just looking pretty good so far. Slim Cannon Rail I did get from an Italian brand that's uh, Mac. I will provide a link in the description below. Uh, shout out to Phantom for the uh, awesome keychain that I also got to. The Slim Cannon itself is made specifically for the Lighter S. The only way to get this on there still was just to put on an older and broken Lighter S and it just twists off really easy. But the main thing was just to kind of keep that inner barrel nice and clean and prevent it from getting dirty. But it, you can see it's kind of flush, so I did kind of just have the lighter S in there just to kind of protect it overall. I've already tried it on the rec field at least a few times. It's a pretty good setup. I got no issues with it or anything. I'm running the 50-4500 peanut tank from Ninja. It's a light carbon build. Um, of course, getting the Euro Tactics grip on there was a hassle, but you know, it's, it's worth it for the durability and the slim grip in its own. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this build. Everything's running at 350 FPS with at least 110 to 115 PSI on the regulator here. Um, inner barrel length is almost flush, which is in a seven inch barrel, which is about 184, 88 millimeters, I can't remember. But I got everything on here from Evike, except for this rail, which was from the Mac brand. It's directly from Italy. Of course, I got the stickers on there. Got my number, got my logo. So it's pretty good. 
a lot of people have been asking me how much I've put into these builds. This one in particular, I kind of calculated its cost between a thousand to twelve hundred dollars. So, um, and that's including the jack, the grip, the regulator that comes with, the rail, the internals, and everything else. This build is more of a competitive build over anything. I do use it on the rec field just to kind of test out the waters, but overall, it is just made specifically for tournaments like SpeedQB, uh, Class X Modesto, the Syndicate tournament. With this in mind, Airsoft is forever changing and that's never gonna stop. These builds used to be so frowned upon in the beginning, now they're just more or less trying to be copied. Hopefully this video does get around to people who are new to Airsoft that see that these builds are not just something that would ruin the aspect of Airsoft, but rather kind of see where HPA is heading toward and seeing what possibilities can be done on the field. If you guys have any questions or even some suggestions for me, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I'll have a link to all the items that I went over in today's video in the description below. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next video.